CT7100 uh, has got a bit of noise on the left channel in recording. So we're going to see if we can't figure it out. What I've done so far, you know, replaced all of these uh, transistors. Uh, some people suggested that maybe, you know, they're not uh, working anymore. Or they're somehow damaged over time, which does happen. They break down. So I did actually replace all of... Uh, those small transistors with uh, this type. These are 1740 low noise and I think they were C2021s that were in there before. Anyway, that hasn't quite solved the problem. I think it's actually reduced uh, the amount of noise but it hasn't actually got rid of it completely. So there's obviously something else going on. So one of the guys on Audio Karma has actually uh, very kindly uh, given me a whole bunch of things that I should uh, have a look at. So there's my list. You know, there's a poor quality print of the PCB, but uh, that's all I can get out of you know the service manuals that are online. I've got the scope there, and uh, we're going to set up and uh, go through it and see if we can find something interesting. So because it's going to be you know quite boring and procedural, uh, we'll stop here, and basically I'll just come back if there's something interesting to have a look at. All right, so I've got the probe set up. And if we have a look at the signal, have a look at that. The yellow line is the right channel and the blue is the left. So there's something going on there. Now, I'm not really sure what that means at the moment. So I think that could actually be fairly significant because, I mean, look how stable that, uh, that yellow line is, the right channel. That's just wonderful. So something's going on and uh, basically we need to figure out what it is. All right, so I've removed the probes from there and I've gone back, we've gone back to the uh, pots, the trim pots there. And I've actually put them on the, basically the input side of these pots and check it out. That is super stable. But if we remove that left one and stick it there, look how much it flicks about. If we do the same for the right channel, beautiful. So I think we've actually found our problem. Um, yeah. That looks pretty pretty rubbish to me. So I have a feeling that uh, maybe if I put a new pot in there, that's going to uh, solve the problem. So I'm not sure if I've got any of anything that's going to fit in there, if I've got anything the right value. So I think these are 15k. I don't think I've got anything like that. I might actually pull that out and just see if we can't actually clean it up or do something with it. Okay, here we are again with the CT7100. As you might remember, the issue I was having was that no, it was recording there's a bit of fuzziness coming through on the left channel. Now that was traced to a bad capacitor in the, uh, basically the in inductor capacitor trap. Uh, it's really uh, an LC tank. And anyway, what we're doing here is I kind of repaired, well, in a way I've got it to work by putting two 471 puff capacitors in series here. So that's with the 16 millihenry, um, the original inductor. Because, you know, you can't get those exact little tiny capacitors anymore. Uh, what I've got here is there's an 18 millihenry uh, inductor on the other side of this. And there's a 471 and I think it's a 331 in series. And that gets us close to, I think it's 194 puff or something like that. So that's bang on, I think, 885 kilohertz. Now, the bias signal is just slightly below that. I think it's 84.88 or something like that. However, that should actually be close enough. So what I'm going to do here in a minute is uh, set up the scope and then just probe it and just see if we're getting, you know, if, if things look like they're doing what I think they should be doing which is basically this should be blocking the signal and you know if we're getting roughly the same and just basically see how it all looks um, I'm not exactly sure how it's 
supposed to look, but anyway, we'll um, have a play with that. So my idea is that if this works and does pretty much what I expected to do, and if I can record to a tape now and everything seems all happy, what I'll do is um, I've got some other inductors that uh, look a little bit, bit nicer, and I might actually figure out a way to... Um, to put this all on the top side. Um, I've got an idea for how that's going to going to work and it will probably be slightly neater and a little bit easier to do than, than putting it all on, on the bottom here. Now these capacitors are quite large, um, especially compared to these ones. Now these ones were originally fitted uh, to the other side. They're 500 volt rated. Uh, I think these are one or two two kilovolt that might be a one kilovolt and I think this is two kilovolt uh, for reasons uh, but anyway uh, basically it's it's what I could get in a high enough voltage um, obviously they you know I'm limited to what they actually have in shop anyway it doesn't matter it needs to be more than about 200 volts and that's safely over 200 volts so that should be no dramas at all it is a little bit of overkill but I mean the price is virtually no different so whatever anyway so rambling aside let's uh, get the scope hooked up let's see what it's doing and uh, see if this is successful uh, my original original idea was actually to use uh, 18 mil henry plus I think uh, 221 uh, capacitors and just that might be also near enough that would be a lot neater but uh, I've done a bit of research into sort of how traps sort of work and they prefer to be you know very close to the frequency that you're actually trying to filter so if i use the two sorry the 221 uh 221 220 no 221 if i use the 221 basically it's going to drop it down to i think uh 80 79 80 kilohertz something like that so there's a bit of a five kilohertz below and I don't know, you know, what the attenuation is going to be because I don't really have, I don't have a frequency machine, you know, frequency generator to, to do the sweep and then to test it and all that sort of stuff. So uh, I think we're just going to rely on the calculations and best guess and just see what happens. Out of interest, I probably will hook up a 221 and see if it looks significantly different. If it looks virtually the same or if it gives the same filter effect, um, then you know, th that'll probably do because that will be the neatest. However, this is what the math says I should use. Um, so let's do it and see what happens. Okay, so this is sort of interesting enough. I thought I'd get the tripod out and we'll have a look at this. So on one side of this LC tank, that's our bias signal. And I think that's supposed to be our filtered out. So as you can see, it's attenuated, but actually not by as much. So this is the basically the original one with the dodgy dub, blah, blah, blah. So this is the one where I've done the math and, you know, it should be a bit closer. Now, I don't think I've got this bias even between the two at the moment. So that'll be something to do a bit later. But then if we look on the other side, there's nothing there. Look at it. So if we increase this a little bit, you know, it's it's starting to show a little bit. It's there. So that's 500 millivolts, that's 200 millivolts per division. So I think that's actually probably doing what it's supposed to do. I, yeah, that's much more impressive. So I think that might be the way to go. So I haven't actually fed a signal into this and I haven't seen how it's recording on tape. But what I think I'll do now is we'll make them both the same, uh, same on each side, and then we'll actually hook up uh, a source to this and just try recording the tone and just see what happens. Okay, I've wired these in, put in a, a new 18 mil Henry inductor, so let's have a look. So as you remember, this one was looking pretty pretty good. So that's the attenuated signal. That's that's the original bias coming in. So we should have the same here. And look at that. Beautiful, hey? So if we go back to this and we sort of drop that onto screen 
as you can see, almost nothing. Same here, almost nothing. So they're pretty close. Um, I think a little bit of fine tuning and adjusting and we'll get them basically almost exactly the same. So I'm pretty happy with that. So the next thing I want to do before we go any further is we're actually going to put like a one kilohertz signal into that. Make sure it actually goes to tape. And uh, yeah, that should be the bias sorted. And actually then pretty much the cassette deck in total then sorted. So there'll just be a bit of minor adjusting to um, record levels and all that sort of stuff. Fingers crossed. Thank you.